Belief answers questions. As humans, we crave answers for the fundamental questions in life, like where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? Whether we acknowledge it or not, everyone has a belief. And this belief seeks to answer those questions and shapes the way we view the world. All our conscious thought can be attributed to the framework of our subconscious thinking. To put it simply, all our own ideas and thoughts are just a reflection of what is going on behind the scenes. A journal study titled The Biochemistry of Belief, published in the Indian Psychiatry Journal, put it this way. Beliefs are basically the guiding principles in life that provide direction and meaning in life. Beliefs are the preset, organized filters to our perceptions of the world, external and internal. You may be thinking, but that's impossible. I'm an atheist, or I only believe in science. Well, literary theorist Stanley Fish wrote, science requires faith too, before it can have reasons, and described those who don't accept evolution as belonging to a different faith community. For example, take what the American Society of Atheists have to say about belief. Atheism is not an affirmative belief that there is no God. It is simply a rejection of the assertion that there are gods. Now, if that's not a play of words, frankly, I don't know what would be. And it gets even more confusing. Now, they continue and go on to say that atheism is not a disbelief in gods or a denial of gods. It is a lack of belief in gods. Now, I'm even more confused. Isn't a lack of belief in gods equivalent to disbelief or denial? Because a lack of belief is a choice given that everyone in the developed world has been presented of the idea that there is a god. See, this type of thinking only works in a reality where there was never an assertion made that there is a god. So now the reality is, is that you have to choose if there is a god, because one is not more scientific than the other. According to adherence, which is an independent, non-religiously affiliated group which monitors the number and size of the world's religions. There are 4,300 religions in the world today. Now that's a lot of religions, but to narrow it down, nearly 75% of the world's population practices one of the five most influential religions of the world. Yeah, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, and Judaism. Now, why do some people choose to believe one religion over the other? Simply because they think that their chosen religion best explains their fundamental questions and perceptions about life. In the words of apologeticist Ravi Zacharias, these religions have fundamental differences and superficial similarities, not the other way around. In epistemology, which is the theory of knowledge, the criteria of truth are standards and rules used to judge the accuracy of statements and claims. There are approximately 12 of these standards of truth. However, we're only going to look at two of these. And these are correspondence and coherence. Now, coherence is defined as a consistent and overarching explanation for all facts. In other terms, coherence is a theory that most effectively reconciles all facts and may be considered most likely to be true. Now, one limitation of this test is that something can only be perfectly coherent if it comes from an omniscient being. Now, this is because we as humans in our inability to acquire all the facts of an experience cannot create a fully coherent reality. The source of coherence must be outside of ourselves as we are fundamentally limited. This is where theism differentiates itself from Hinduism and Buddhism that rely on uninspired writings from individuals who believe they themselves are the source of truth. Hinduism teaches that Brahman is the material, efficient, formal, and final cause of all that exists. The most prominent thought in Hinduism is Advaita Vedanta. This thought blends Brahman with Atman, which is the self, in essence elevating each individual to the place of the divine. In Hinduism, man is God. Every man is God. We are all divine. While Hinduism does teach to worship other gods, it does not make a distinction between ourselves and those gods, meaning that the answers for questions and fundamental things in life essentially come from you and me, not in something existing outside of ourselves, which is omniscient. Buddhism does not acknowledge a supreme god or deity. Instead, its main focus is achieving enlightenment. The religion's founder, Buddha, is considered to be an extraordinary man, but not a god. Again, in order for something to be perfectly coherent, it must come from a source 
outside of ourselves that is omniscient. And that is not Buddha, as Buddha was just a man. The second test is correspondence. Correspondence is explained as when a claim corresponds with its objects. For example, the claim that the Eiffel Tower is in France is true. If the Eiffel Tower is actually located in France. In other words, correspondence is the test if a claim can match what is known and accepted as historical, geographic and scientific fact. And the claim will only be true if it can have basis in correspondence in the already established truths. For example, the Judeo-Christian texts claim that a man named Jesus lived and died. However, the Islamic Quran in Surah 4 Ayat pages 157 to 158 does not agree with this view, saying that they, the Jews, said, We kill Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. Now, according to the test of correspondence, we can determine which is objectively true if one aligns the claim with the pre-existing historical fact. So what does history actually tell us? Well, from Roman politicians Pliny and Tacitus, we learn that Jesus was in fact executed while Pontius Pilate was a Roman prefect in charge of Judea and Tiberius was the emperor. This is an exact unison with the claims of the Gospels found in the biblical account. We have just eliminated three out of five of the major world religions through the test of coherence and correspondence. Logically, I would be skeptical delving further into those religions with the knowledge that fundamentally they are flawed. If I'm about to embark on a journey, I want to make sure that my first step is in the right direction. If I'm even one degree off course, then even if it seems like a minor difference to begin with, in the end, I'm not going to be where I hoped. When I go to build a house, I need to make sure that my foundation is perfect. If I'm a bit off here or there, or if it's, if it's not perfectly leveled, it will cause a lot of implications further down the process. It's much harder to go back and fix something than it is to do it the right way from the beginning. Step by step, precept upon precept, line upon line. What are we left with? Only the Judeo-Christian worldview passes the test of coherence and correspondence. This begs the question, are you satisfied with the answers you are currently receiving and believing? Or are you craving more, something deeper?